Hello, welcome to DIY Design by CCW, and thank you so much for clicking on my video. Well, today, as you can see, I have several glass uh, pieces in front of me. I have this beautiful thrifted ginger jar. This is a jar, or rather a vase, that I've made over many times on my channel, as well as these Dollar Tree storage containers. Um, I simply love these. Uh, this is another Dollar Tree container, and uh, I am going to be adding a little bling, as always. I've got various uh, types of bling wrap here, uh, this beautiful gunmetal trim that I've used many times on my channel, as well as another uh, trim that I found, sort of a fabric uh, remnant trim that I found, <clears throat> excuse me, forgive me because I'm just getting over a very, very bad uh, bout of the flu. But um, here I'm going to also be making over this uh, tray and it's a tray from my stash. I haven't used it in forever because it's really beat up and tarnished and I'll see if I can make it over. Also, I am going to be doing a little painting today. I have this beautiful sterling silver paint. It's made by folk art. It's a multi-surface paint, but it's also a metallic. Now, hopefully everything turns out and uh, we'll see. Now, before I do anything, I'm going to take the pieces off camera, clean them all thoroughly with alcohol, and then we'll jump right into today's DIY. All right, now, there you see I have my acrylic brush. Now, basically what I've started doing with the paint uh, is using a disposable cup uh, to mix the paint in. And uh, I use a little disposable spoon uh, to stir the paint up. And then I go ahead and start painting. Now, um, some of you had asked me to give you a little bit more advice on the painting. So I am going to show how I do the first coat as well as the second coat in this video. And hopefully that will help uh, those of you that had asked or had some questions. So first of all, again, first step, clean the piece thoroughly then clean it with alcohol and dry it. Um, here you see, I'm just basically trying to keep my brush strokes as even as possible, going in the same direction as much as possible. Now, with this first coat, when you first put it on, you can barely even see it, you know, especially with the metallic paints. Um, now, with the satin paints, they go on a little bit heavier. The pigment is a little thicker. But whenever you're working with a metallic paint, expect the first coat to be very sheer. There you see I've decided to paint the underside of this uh, Dollar Tree candle holder. And now I'll go ahead and move on to the vase. Now, one of the reasons I like using these vases is number one, they're very versatile. I use them a lot in my home decor. I give them away as gifts. I use them for flower arrangements. You name it. You name it. Um, but it's also easy to hold when you're painting. There you see I've got my gloved hand inserted inside the vase and I'm just going to keep circling the vase and kind of turning it until I get some nice even coverage all around. Now to avoid the streaks again you want to go as light as you possibly can on this first coat. Try to keep your brush strokes as even as possible. And, um, and that's really it. Let those coats dry completely in between so that you don't overload the paint. And by doing that, you should be able to avoid getting streaks. Now, in a second or two, I will show you how I do the second coat of the paint. And then off camera, I'll come back and do a third coat and we'll be ready to go ahead and start adding some embellishment uh, to these pieces. Now there you see, I, I love to seal the cup and the brush in a plastic bag. That way the paint and the brush, uh, stay, you know, they stay moist and I don't have to keep rinsing my brush in between coats. Now, and uh, or starting with a new brush so here i am i'm back to do the second coat now as you can see 
as the paint dried, the, the pigment did get a little bit darker. So there I'm going inside of the uh, uh, candle holder again. And here I'm going to come back and touch up and put the second coat on the vase. And again, off camera, I'll come back and do a third coat. And then these pieces will be ready for embellishment. All right, so now that the paint is dry on all of the pieces, uh, all three coats, I'm going to use this folk art uh, sealant to seal the paint. There's a close-up look so that you can see uh, what it is, and I'll make sure to link uh, and list it in my description box. And basically, this is a polyurethane sealant. I'm using it to seal the paint so that if I wanted to, I can immerse these pieces in water or, you know, use them in a restroom or anywhere, uh, you know, where they're, it, they may come in contact with water. So what you want to do here is spray the sealant. And there you see I'm using an acrylic brush to just um, spread the sealant out. And uh, be very careful with it. You don't need a lot. A little goes a long way. And there I'm just brushing it over the painted surfaces. And uh, I'm going to do the same thing with the vase. Again, just lightly, uh, I'm going to go around the vase and kind of spritz the painted areas. And um, once I do that, I'll go ahead and spread that uh, polyurethane sealant out with the brush now uh, you want to do that so that you don't have even though this dries clear you don't want to have any splotchy marks or anything like that on your painted surface and then before it dries you'll take uh, you should take maybe a paper towel as you see me doing there or a cloth and kind of clean that spritz away from the glass or any surface that you don't want coated and then let this dry and then once this dries i'll be ready to do our next step So before I do uh, or add any embellishment, I'm just going to take some regular E6000 and then glue this uh, Dollar Tree candle base to the bottom of the Dollar Tree cylinder. I just wanted to give this piece a little bit of height. And again, I'll be using it as an apothecary container. Um, again, pretty easy to do here. Just glue the two pieces together, set them aside. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and trim out the Dollar Tree jars. Now I buy these jars, uh, again, I'm a Dollar Tree affiliate, so I do buy uh, these things in bulk and I buy these jars like a, a dozen at a time. Um, I use them quite a bit in my DIYs because they're, first of all, inexpensive, very versatile, and, uh, you know, make a lot of things with them, especially storage containers. And I love giving these away as gifts. Uh, of course, I do keep some for myself. Now here I'm using this gunmetal trim uh, that's made by Joanne Fabrics. I'll make sure to put a link to the trim or to the site where you can purchase the trim down in my description box. Now this trim can be a little pricey. Um, I think it's too expensive really. It's like $10 a yard. However, uh, what I do and what the best thing to do is wait until you get a coupon. Um, now I purchase it when I get a 60% off coupon and stock up. Uh, it comes in like a bronze color and a gold and I've used it quite a bit on my channel. Uh, just absolutely love it. Very easy way to dress up, you know, anything that you want to dress up and it's very durable. Um, even though uh, it is a, like a gunmetal look, it's actually plastic so you can use it anywhere even somewhere where uh, it might come in, into contact with some moisture 
So there you see I'm using my E6000 quick hold, quick hold glue. Now, because sometimes that glue can break down a little bit over time, it grabs quick, but it doesn't last as long as the regular E6000. There you see I've added just a little bit of the regular E6000 to make sure that the trim stays uh, adhered. And uh, now I'm going to just use this other trim. Now what I do too, I go to Joann's as I said, and you hear me talk about it all the time, but this was a remnant where they had just a little bit left on a bolt and they give it to you for almost nothing. I think I paid maybe a dollar a yard for this trim uh, that I'm working with now. So good way to, you know, stock up, get your supplies so that you're not spending much, you know, on your embellishments. Now, you, as you can see, I just trimmed it down, cut it down to size, and I'm adding just a little dab of glue so that I can place it around the rim of uh, these jars and then once I do that I'll come back and add a little bit more embellishment So for the vase, what I'm going to do is add, again, working with the gunmetal trim so that I keep the same uniform look. Uh, what I did is off camera, I cut several strips of the gunmetal trim and uh, kind of trimmed it down. Uh, when you work with this trim, when you cut it, uh, occasionally you will have to trim like Little, the little strings uh, from the edges so that you get a clean you know look and a nice edge 
but again uh, I cut the, the uh, gunmetal trim into several strips and basically I'm just going to work my way around the vase. Now when you're doing this type of design uh, how you can an easy way rather to get your strips even is just to work from uh, opposite sides of the vase. So there you see I put uh, pieces on either side then turn the vase sideways repeated that step and I'll just keep doing that until I get enough you know strips on there and I get the look that I want. All right, so to finish off the vase, uh, I'm going to add again a little more of that beautiful silver uh, trim. Again, I believe it was it's it's a belt trim made by some uh, simplicity, and uh, I'm going to use that trim around the foot area of the vase, and uh, I think I end up using a little around the neck area as well but you're also going to notice that I'll end up covering that with a little bit of the rhinestone trim. Now once I do that and add uh, my brooch for the focal point, I'll move on to the next part of the DIY.
Uh, so on to the mirror. Um, well, instead of making a mirror from scratch, which is what I typically do for on this channel, um, and if you follow this channel, then you know that I absolutely love making these decorative trays or perfume trays, vanity trays, whatever you want to call them. Instead of making one from scratch, what I'm going to do is make over this old tray that I've had for some time. Now, I purchased this tray some years ago from Ross, I believe. And, um, you know, it's just seen its better days. Again, you can't really see it on camera, but it's kind of tarnished. And uh, the mirror that was inside the tray is a little bit damaged. So, uh, again, I was going to throw it out. And then I thought, you know what? Let me see if I can make it over. So, the first thing I did is trim up the felt on the bottom. Um, and then add a decorative mirror to the bottom. Now, I like to do that so that when I use this mirror on top of a mirrored surface, it looks nice. Also, I'm planning to add uh, some little decorative feet or crystal legs to this tray, and it will be easier to get them to adhere to the mirrored surface. surface. So um, after gluing on the, the mirror on the bottom and making sure that it's secure, uh, I've flipped the mirror over. And again, you can't really see it on camera, but this mirror that's inside or the original mirror is a little bit damaged. So here I'm just gluing in a replacement mirror. And then once I do that, I'll come back and add a little bit more embellishment. So now it's time for a little bit of embellishment. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is glue on, uh, again, still working with that beautiful uh, decorative, I believe, again, I think it, it's called, um, it's a belt trim, and uh, it's made by Simplicity, and uh, again, something they sell at Julian Fabrics. I'm going to go ahead and glue that on first and then that way I can cover up all the tarnished, uh, you know, metal work that was originally on the tray. Then I'll flip the tray over or I, I did flip the tray over as you can see and I'm gluing on these little crystal knobs. Uh, now if you're looking for these knobs or you'd like to purchase them, these are just crystal drawer pulls and I do sell them in my Amazon shop. Now I'm gluing them on with E6000 to make sure that they're secure and then once I do that I'll come back and add a little bit more embellishment to the tray and then the tray will be done. All right, so now I'll add a little bit of embellishment to the vanity tray. Uh, I want this tray to be, a, you know, to, to match the pieces that I've made. So I'm going to work with some of the same materials. You'll see that I'll use a little bit of the rhinestone trim. I'm going to use the same brooches and a little bit of the gunmetal trim that I used on the other pieces. And then once that's done, I'll move on to the next part of the DIY.
right now before I move on to the final reveal it wouldn't be one of my videos if I didn't make lids for my pieces if you're new to this channel you may not know this but uh, typically I like to make lids for everything that way the pieces can be they're a little bit more versatile I don't I'm not using them just as vases uh, typically I will use them as storage pieces vanity you know for pieces that I can use on my vanity pieces that can be used in the restroom apothecary uh, storage type containers you name it so for these lids I'm keeping it really simple I'm just using some of this uh, two millimeter closed chain wrap now this wrap comes from uh, eFavor Mart and again I'm an eFavor Mart affiliate so you can purchase this by clicking the link down in my description box also these acrylic discs I do sell them on my Amazon shop they're uh, just a little bit bigger than three inches and they're the perfect size uh, and I'm gonna make three identical lids for these pieces so I'm adding the fabric trim as you can see now the one thing about the fabric trim or the uh, closed chain closed chain wrap is it and the way I use the fabric trim around the edge of uh, the pieces that's what kind of locks the lids in, in place now some of you have asked me about that and I do it in different ways uh, the acrylic, I find that if I just add the fabric trim or the closed chain wrap like I'm doing here, that will help keep the lid in place. Now, if it's a mirror, then I use a different technique. So again, pretty simple here. Once I get the, the uh, closed chain wrap in place, these uh, particular uh, discs, acrylic discs, they come with little tabs so that you can easily pull back uh, the protective covering. I've learned to keep the protective covering on until I'm finished gluing on whatever trim I'm going to glue on. That way I don't get glue all over the acrylic, which is very hard to remove. And then once I do that, I'm going to glue on these crystal knobs. Now these crystal knobs are identical to the ones I used on the mirror, except these are a little bit larger. And then once that's done, that's it. And when I come back, it'll be time for the final reveal. Right, this is how the mirror turned out. You know what, I like it, but let me know what you think. And there is the entire set with the mirror. Now let's take a closer look at everything. Um, you know what? I think I can use this set and I think I like it. But again, let me know what you think. It's been a while since I've worked with silver. I've been doing a lot of um, gold lately, but uh, I do like this silver set. I like how the sterling silver paint turned out on the vase. I like the gunmetal trim and then the pops of silver with the other trim that I found on clearance. I mean, not too bad considering that this mirror was a mirror that I was going to throw away and that all three of these containers come from Dollar Tree. Um, you know what? And I think I've made them into something that I can use. But again, let me know what you think. There's another view with all three pieces together. Um, overall, I'm happy with the set. Now, in a second or two here, I'll show you. Uh, there's a closer look um, at the vase and how it turned out. Now, in a minute here, I'm going to show you uh, s some pieces from earlier DIYs like I typically do. And uh, But again, I, I do like this, and I think I'll get some, some use out of it. All right, now this vase I made, uh, I think, during the holidays last year, and uh, it's a, obviously a glitter vase. I'll make sure to link that video down in the description box. And then this is one of the pieces that came with the set. 
Now, um, I will go ahead, like I said, and link everything down in the description box. But guys, that's all I have for you today. I hope you like the video. If you would, if you haven't subscribed and you like this kind of DIY, I hope you'll do that. I hope you'll also visit my other channels. I've left links to them down in my description box. So again, thank you for watching. And I can't wait to see you, each and every one of you, in the next video. Have a wonderful day or night. Bye-bye.